This was quite a trip over on your farm yesterday, I have to say. It was a stunning little moment for us. I'm keen to see how this plays out with the water test. So this is our legendary pond. Um, this was put in not long after Dad bought the farm. And what's cool about it is that there's 65 hectares that comes off our farm into this pond. It's our catchment that comes into this part of the farm. There's only about 100 metres of the neighbours, little small pipes. So this is a real good snapshot of what you, a representation of what we do on the farm. Really important for us because we actually can see what's happening. So it's pretty interesting watching the process because the water tests, which we've just done, and we'll do go at the, um, we'll show you in the studio tomorrow. But if we look at the water coming off, it's pretty clean especially coming off a highly productive beef farm with you know nearly 300 animals roaming around on it. The water test came back at 0 0.07 parts per million of nitrate. Um, there was a little bit of turbidity. We had had a big rain um, in the week before. And what also came back was really interesting. We only had about four or five, um, the measurement of the E. coli in the water, which is about one fiftieth of what they call safe levels for swimming. So it's, you know, if you want to go swimming out there, she's all cool. You know, a lot of people have said, well, it's the wildlife that caused the problem in the water. Well, when we got here, there was 200 ducks or so took off and there's plenty more down there. It's not them causing the problem. It's the way we farm. And the water test that we're doing here is really a representation of what we've done on the farm. As we've changed the farm, we've seen this change. The original water test we did was 3.14 parts per million nitrate, which is not that bad anyway, but it's nice to know. After that year, and we changed the way we were doing things, stepped up the technology in regard to the silicon application, understood the carbon growth, bang, down went the nitrates. Now we're in a beautiful situation where every year we're down below 0.1 of a part per million of nitrate. And considering that if you go to likes of Ashburton, they're sitting at 22 parts per million in their aquifers now. It's pretty serious. So, this is what you can do. You're definitely very passionate about the kind of water that's coming off the farm and the results you're getting there. What is it that's so important about the way yours is coming off? Well, look, it's a real reflection of how well the soils are working. That, that's all it is to me. It's like, if the soils are really healthy, <laughs> the manures from the animal get digested and put back in the soil. So we don't get phosphorus coming off the soil because the phosphorus only comes off when it comes off of manures, dung and things like that. Mm. So if the soil's working well, it's back in the ground. Cool. So the water's telling us that. Okay. The other part is this big issue about nitrates. You know, and there's massive problems with nitrates in the water. You know, down in Canterbury, I think they're 22 parts per million around Ashburton at the moment. And, it, and there's a lot of connections to colorectal cancer and other issues that are going on, and people are trying to ignore it. We've done other videos on these. Yeah. Have a look at the nitrate video in the water, and you're going, it's not good. If it's getting away, your soils aren't working, and you're wasting nutrient. Like, this, we took this one here in 2019, and I just went right back. I thought, well, okay, well, let's just show you the continuity of how we're going on yeah. this process. So, like two different labs in this case. T yeah, we we swapped over urethans, and and that, no problem with hills, but it was only the herbage test that I could do that I can get everything I want. I see to, all in one go. All yeah. in one go. So I've swapped over yeah. for that. But nitrate in point seven three of a part per million. Let's zoom in on it a bit. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Nitrate in point seven three. Okay, now. Look at this. Maximum acceptable value, 11.3. What? Now, that level on 11.3 was actually created because that's what they thought that when the level gets to that, you get the problem about blue baby syndrome. Now, we had a really good episode about this. We did. And, and, so and in actual fact, it, it was, they, they from what I learned, the professor said they misattributed E. coli when it was actually nitrate, right? Yeah, well, either way around, okay? I say, and I've seen this and observed this, it's like if you have 
high nitrates, you will have E. coli, or there's a more ch- there's a higher chance you will have massive right. E. coli. That's right. Now, this is all. This was actually um, this test was <laughs> done for water drinking water, but and this one, the second test is actually for um, what we call farm water runoff and that sort of stuff. Okay, so slight difference. Slight in, difference in but, the requirement. Yeah, but yeah, so. But look at that, 0.73. <sighs> and I, the first time I put that out on Facebook, people laughed at me, said, you can't get it that low. Really? Yeah. They yeah. didn't think you could get it that you, low. Well, you know, it's you, funny. you're dreaming. You're, being, you're dreaming. Right? What on earth do they think you, you make up the tests or something? I mean. <laughs> that This is the, the, the level um, of what we're dealing with, is that people yeah. aren't looking at what's going on. Nitrate in, okay? Yeah. Now, if you look at the what we are now, it's this year, 0.07. So there's a continuity of keeping it clean, you know? Well, hang on. No, 0.07 is even lower. Oh, bugger me. It's 10 times less, isn't it? Quite a bit lower. Yeah, yeah well, anyway. la- last year last year was 0.05, so it's gone. Oh, really? <laughs> but with an, with an MAV of 11.3, geez, yeah. that's n- nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. And what's really interesting from this process down here, if you look at that, we didn't have the E. coli in the drinking water one, but here it's at six, okay? Okay. Now it's, oh, God, I can't remember the unit number, whatever, but they, the the environment wake at all and they were saying that if you're over 200, 250 of these little E. coli, it's dangerous to swim in. Okay. Well, it'd be better than my local public pool then. Probably. Yeah. Wow. So this is a real indication that our farm is working the way it should work. To me, it's like what leaves the farm is clean. Yeah. And it's, it's a bit dirty and muddy, you know, you wouldn't want to drink it. Well, you could drink it. You wouldn't get any trouble with it. But like, this is what's wrong now is that we're having an acceptable behavior to 22 to parts per million and saying, oh, the farmers can't do anything about it. Da, 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 da. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Mm-hmm. And the information as we've gone through this video today is just merely the process to actually get things in order and put on your farm what you need to be highly productive and very environmentally friendly. But guess what? They go hand in hand. Mm. And so this is really important to me because it just shows that whatever leaves the farm's clean. Mm. The cattle and, and the products that leave the farm, they're in fantastic order. And that's how we should be farming. Yeah. I've always enjoyed putting out good products. Yeah. So nobody can complain that I'm stuff out the environment. I'm actually fixing it. No, that's true. No one can make that complaint. And I suppose if you really want to fix the environment, you've got to look at fixing the soils and getting all of these tests and the right zones and ratios. The biggest problem we have in all of agriculture is no one talks to each other. So like the soil scientists don't talk to the microbiologists and the microbiologists don't talk to the environmental people and... Alan goes, and you don't talk to animal nutritionists and you don't talk to this. Instead of again getting in a room and banging their heads together and going, there's too many nitrates in our feed for our animals. And they could go to the dairy company, oh, we've noticed that. Those nitrates, they turn up in our milk. We've got milk, urea, nitrogen up at 40. And the vet could say, oh, it appears to me that when it gets to that level, we have really bad trouble trying to get cows and calf. But, oh, that's really showing up in the water sample, says Mr. Joy. Oh, well, we need to fix that, you know, but there's none of this. Yeah. And like people can poke borax and fingers at me all the time and go, you're not an expert in this and I'm not an expert in that, blah, blah, blah. I'm going, actually, I'm quite an expert in a combination of putting everything together to make it freaking work. Yeah, you've got a really good touch of the overall holistic viewpoint. Absolutely. Yeah, and to get I, everything running really well. I can't be a vet. I don't want to be a vet. I'm, no. can't, I don't want to be a microbiologist, but I know a lot about microbiology. You know, like, but, you know, you know a lot about animal nutrition. Oh, I wasn't an animal nutritionist and I wasn't a vet. Oh, but, but I watch my animals and you can read, you can observe, and you do this training and the soils training. And that, that's the thing from the soils training. God, I learned so much. And then I go, hmm, but it's not working. What are I going to do next? So then we do all these other things and we're just continually moving on and progressing about how good our farms can really be. Mm. And like that thing that I pointed out before 
where we see the silicon and the aluminium flip and the thistles go away and the gorse, they go away. It's an absolute. They will not grow in those conditions when that happens. I haven't seen anyone else actually point that out before, but it's just something that we have observed along the dray going, ah, look, there it goes. Yeah, well, if you want to understand that better, we've got a really good weeds video. Absolutely. It only just came out several weeks ago. Yeah, and I, actually, we should put in the part there about the silicon and the aluminium now that it's become so obvious to us in the tests that are going on. It's like, yep, there it is. Yeah, yeah. You mean like if we were to do that weeds video again, you would add that info? Yeah, I'd just yeah. Add, that, add that next part in, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, we could always do a weeds part three. Yeah, that's right. There's plenty <laughs> of them around. Um, did you want to reiterate anything a little closer up as it zooms in on it? No, not it, not really. I mean, the thing is, is that the numbers are... 2019 through to 2025. It's really interesting. Yeah, it's bloody great. And it's yeah. really good what's going on. And as I say, you know, I remember putting the numbers up uh, on a Facebook page and these young guys from Lincoln, they, oh, where'd you get those numbers on the back of a bloody beer crate? They <laughs> go... No, and I sent them the test numbers and I sent them this and I was, and the, oh, oh, oh. And then they sort of backed off a bit and then I said, well, why don't you guys, you know, look at this and look at that? Because I'd written an article on silica and water quality because silicon has a huge part to play in this process. Oh, really? And water quality? Yeah. So it's, what you don't realize is the cyanobacteria that get into, that live in the water there, they need yeah. the silicon to grow a structure. And they are part. They're a, they're the first stage plants in the in the water cycle as well. And yeah, and you you explained how early on that you require good backbone to um, grass with silica. So if you want good tall grass, it needs the silica. Yes, and it's yeah. the same thing with these like the, the microbes. They need a structure. And sure. The, yeah. So all of these things, you need a silicon cycle in the water, and the water has cyanobacteria, and they take out any excess nutrient, turn them into plant food you know, ducklings, you know, fish, whatever else. Mm. And on goes in the cycle and oh, they jumped up and down. And I gave them some um, books to read and I actually sent them uh, the ISBN number of um, silica in agriculture, which is a compilation of a huge number of studies on silicon in agriculture. Right. And they took it to the university professor and he said, oh, it's all bullshit. Oh, come on. No, not at all. Not at all. No. Wow. And so this is the ignorance. These that, are not on your list of approved reading textbooks. That's right. Yeah. Wow. And so I don't know who's supposed to be right, you know, in this process. Only what we see happens and what we've got going on. Keen to dive deeper? Check out our audiobook and Eco Farmers Discovery on Spotify or grab our free ebook, The Six Things You Need to Improve Soil and Farm Profit. Links in the description.